Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra, Checkpoint Quiz 4. We're given a matrix A, and in number 1, we're asked to find A inverse using row operations. So remember what the strategy here is. We're going to make a supersized augmented matrix with A on one side and the identity on the other. Then we're going to do row ops. And we're going to attempt to change A into the identity. And if we can manage to do that, what's on the left-hand side will turn out to be A inverse. And so we talked about why this works in class. Essentially what we're doing is we're solving AX equals each column of the identity all at once. Okay, so let's start off here with our A and then our identity. The identity here will be the 3 by 3 identity. So the first row of that is 1, 0, 0. 3, 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. And then 2, 7, negative 2, 0, 0, 1. So now we are all set to do our row operations. So first thing we want is a 1 in the upper left hand corner. I can get that by uh, switching row 1 and row 2. Switch row 1 and row 2. So the old row, row 2 is the new row 1. So 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. The old row 1 is the new row 2. 0, negative 1, 2, 1, 0, 0. And then 2, 7, negative 2, 0, 0, 1. I have a 1 up here. I want zeros underneath it. I can quickly get that by replacing row 3 with negative 2 row 1 plus row 3. So I'm going to replace row 3 with negative 2 row 1 plus row 3. So row 1 itself, I haven't replaced, so it stays there. Row 2. Now for row 3, I take each entry in row 1, multiply by negative 2, and then add it to the corresponding entry in row 3. So negative 2 times 1 plus 2, 0. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 7 is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 0 is 0. Negative 2 times 1 plus 0 is negative 2, and then we get 1. What's my next goal? My next goal is I want to get a 1 here, and zeros underneath it. Well, uh, there are two ways I could get that. I could multiply through by negative 1, or I could just switch row 2 and row 3. I'm just going to switch the rows because I'm going to have a 0 there I'm going to want to keep. So switch row 2 and row 3 now. So row 1 is what it always was. So row 2 will now be 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 2, 1. And row 3 now is 0, negative 1, 2, 1, 0, 0. Now I want to get a 0 underneath him. I can get that by just adding row 3 and row 2. So I'm going to replace row 3 with 1 row 2 plus row 3. So 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 2, 1. And then I'm going to just add 0 and 0 is 0. 1 and negative 1 is 0. 0 and 2 is 0. 0 and 1 is 1. Negative 2, 1. The next thing I need to do is get a 1 down here. I can do that by multiplying that by uh, 1 half. You may also say, well, why can't you? You can also get a 1 there by adding row 1 and row 3 together. But if I did that, I would screw up the zeros I have here because I have to add all these entries. So I'm going to just uh, multiply row 3 by a half.
Now, to get it, this is row echelon form, but to get it into reduced row echelon form, I gotta get a zero here. So I need to get a zero there, and then I need to get a zero there. Okay, so to get a, a zero here, I can replace row one. Oops, I'll go back to black here. Replace row one with row three plus row one. So row one I'm replacing. When I add the corresponding entries to row three to row one, what do I get? I get one, three, zero, one half, zero, one half. Row two I've left alone. And row three I've left alone. The last thing I need to do then is get a zero in this spot. I can use row two to get me that. So I'm going to replace row one with negative three row two plus row one. So I'm going to have one, zero, zero, one half. When I multiply this by negative three, I get a positive six. I multiply this by negative 3, I get negative 3. So negative 3 is negative 6 halves. 0, 1, 0. 0, negative 2, 1. 0, 0, 1. 1 half, negative 1, 1 half. And if we've done everything correctly and haven't made any algebraic mistakes, that's our A inverse. All right, so our claim is that A inverse equals 1 half, 6, negative 5 halves, 0, negative 2, 1, 1 half, negative 1, 1 half. Now, if this were a, a test or something, we could check it. We're not asked to check it. We could check it because A times A inverse should be the same as A inverse times A which in this case should be the 3 by 3 identity. So that'll do it for number 1.